But where sound sampling and computer control are having an increasing impact is in the world of television and films. Dick Lewis is one of many whose business is to create music to order for anyone who wants it, for radio jingles, TV ads or film scores. And for him, it's cheaper and quicker to try out ideas with the picture over and over again to get it exactly right. Because he needs that flexibility to produce the precise sound that the client wants. And that can range from anything from a skiffle group to a symphony orchestra. So all in all, he's just the man to try out a little experiment for us. <laughs> Now, all we want you to do is uh, totally recreate Beethoven's Ninth, all right? Mind you, not all of it. It's just one small section, and it's uh, here, this bit. Right, this is the part we want. What do you think? Yeah, we get asked to do that kind of thing all the time, actually. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to make it easy for you. Here's the score. OK. So what will you need first? Well, from the look of this, the first thing would be French horns. So let's get rid of that. And um, I've got a French one over here, which I'll just load. Well, that's a great start, Dick, but what else are you going to need? Well, it'll be violins, be the next thing, and there's a whole string section. Dick has a range of samples for each instrument. And you can select the one with just the right expression. That's got the orchestra covered. Now, there is one other thing that I will need. Right. Freude, schöne Gotter, Funken, Tochter, aus Elysium. Wir betreten Feuer, trunken, himmlische, dein Heil. I've probably given you more work than you anticipated there, haven't I? Well, no, it's OK, because I've got it over here on the sampler. Right. Now, if we have a listen to that... We'll be treating for your drunken. What we can do with that is take each word and change the pitch so I can make a bass part as well as the tenor part. So that needs a bit more work, obviously. Now, the bass line will be okay, the tenor's okay, but I'm not quite so sure about the soprano. <laughs> <laughs> well, Walt Disney might like it, but what are you going to do? Uh, I'll have to book a soprano. Right. Well, you seem to have got it just about all there, so I'll tell you what, we'll leave you to it and we'll come back later to see how you get on. OK, yeah, I'll start programming. It seems that everywhere in commercial music, from TV ads to pop records, technology is there to help out. And the same is also happening in more serious music, and I don't just mean copying the classics. Composer Jonathan Harvey, whose son sang in the choir, came to Winchester Cathedral for inspiration. You're listening to the opening of his piece now. It may sound a bit like a peal of bells, and yes, he did record up here in the Belfry, but he didn't record all the bells, just this one, the tenor. It's the largest of all the bells, and it sounds the note to sing. He also recorded his son singing the inscription on the bell, part of which, Mortuus Plango, gave him a title. And with just those two sounds as samples, he created a complete piece which is regarded as a classic of electronic music. Here, just the harmonics of the bell create new sounds of their own. Jonathan Harvey didn't work on this piece in England. He came here, to Paris. 
Centre appears to be a mecca for all kinds of traditional music, but it's also home to the most advanced computer music centre in Europe. It's called Ircam. It's run by the French modern composer Pierre Boulez, and this year it's celebrating its 10th anniversary. It was down here that the sound of the largest bell at Winchester Cathedral was turned into music, because it's here that powerful computers are put to work on sound, like others work on space programs. Some projects last for years, like synthesizing the human voice. Well, if Dick Lewis couldn't create a human voice for his Beethoven's Ninth, then perhaps he should have come here. Have a look at this. A I now, that's a spectrum analysis of my voice, and these peaks represent certain resonances within it. I'll do it again and watch how those peaks change as the vowel sounds change. A -I. Amazingly, by analyzing the way those resonances change for every vocal sound, they've built a computer program which perfectly imitates the singing voice. But imitating the human voice is only the first step. With the knowledge they've gained of how the voice works in detail, they can now go on to create totally new sounds, all based around the human voice. voices are still to be heard at ear camp and taking part in perhaps the most challenging approach to electronic music using the computer to accompany and enhance the sounds of conventional musicians it relies on the specially designed computer that can work fast enough to respond to live instruments or voices as they perform This piece is being rehearsed for a 10th anniversary concert by the composer Thierry Lancino. The computer adds subtle effects, sometimes repeating the notes played, sometimes hanging on to them after the musicians have moved on. The instrument to be modified by the computer is selected by the musicians themselves pressing foot switches. And the computer responds by processing that passage in the way that's been pre-programmed. This next piece takes those ideas a step further. It just uses one flute, but the composer, Philip Mannery, has turned the computer into a virtuoso. Here, the computer produces digitally stored sounds of its own, as well as modifying the sound of the flute. And there are no pedals to cue the computer. Its memory holds the complete score, and it follows the flute note by note, once again using that MIDI code, generated by switches specially fitted to the keys. 
it recognizes certain notes or phrases and produces precisely the accompaniment programmed for that moment. Which, when you think about it, is exactly what another musician would do. Cam is very much at the frontiers and perhaps not to everyone's taste. Most of us probably still prefer listening to Beethoven. And if he was here today, I bet he'd use computers. Because 200 years ago, the large symphony orchestra was as new and exciting a way for him to create music as these electronic techniques are for today's composers. And using computers to push back the frontiers of music perhaps makes more sense than simply trying to imitate that symphony orchestra. Which reminds me, what happened to our computer-generated Beethoven? That's really good, but can you make us sound as if we're in the Royal Festival Hall? No problem. a computer imitation, it could never replace the feel of a live concert. So the future of the symphony orchestra seems to be assured, but many of the orchestral sounds you'll hear on film and on adverts exist only in the memory banks of computers. And as for the pop industry, well, electronics has already taken over. And with cleverer and cheaper hardware in the pipeline, who knows where that will lead us. Perhaps one day we'll all be able to produce in the comfort of our own living rooms sounds something like this. Good night.